Hi everyone, welcome to the vlog. Okay, so here's the question. What can you achieve in two weeks of practicing? Like most of you, I'm in a period of isolation at the moment, and there's a couple of things that I've wanted to work on, but also my daughter has also asked to learn how to solo. Now she plays guitar, she's been playing for a few years, and she's a great singer, uh, but she wants to learn how to solo. So I've set her up with a two week challenge, I'm going to teach her a few things and see what she can come up with in a couple of weeks. The other side of that coin, of course, not to be left behind, is uh, some things that I've been working on or wanted to work on for quite a long period of time and things I've found really challenging. Uh, so I've thought, OK, I'm going to work really hard and really focused and see if I can pull these things out of the bag in two weeks. All right, so let's get Liv set up and see how we get on. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Dan here. Liv here, hello. <laughs> so this is my daughter Olivia and Liv uh, plays guitar, she plays rhythm and, and sings, but you've wanted to learn lead yeah. all right, for a long time. Now we're going to do a two week challenge and we're going to see what you can accomplish in two weeks. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to teach you a pentatonic scale, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to get you to learn the notes under your fingers, mm -hmm. but I'm also going to get you to sing every note that you play. Okay. Okay. Now, why will I do this? Because the more that you sing along with the notes that you play, the more that you'll actually start to hear the melodies. All right. So what will happen, you'll get to a point where you can just hum a melody and be able to play it. Right? Yeah. So you'll actually hear the notes before you play it. Yeah. Right? And that will actually give your solos purpose and sort of meaning. And kind of know where they're going. Exactly, you know? exactly. So you're not just sort of fluffing around, you know, picking notes at random, not really yeah. having any idea how that's going to sound. So before I show Liv how to play the pentatonic scale, the first thing I do is I get her to sing it. so that she recognizes it before she even puts her fingers on the guitar. And so over the next couple of weeks, um, she practices every day, spending some time with some uh, YouTube backing tracks and just exploring the sounds that she can make with the pentatonic scale. But absolutely essentially, she is singing along to everything she plays. Okay, so how did she get on? Okay, two weeks? Yeah. Have fun? Yeah, it's good. Okay. I'm going to play something in A minor. Okay. I just want you to play and sing along. Okay? Okay. All right. So I think you'll all agree, she's done brilliantly. Um, learning to sing along with what you're playing is such a fundamental skill because it gives your soloing intent. You hear the lines before you play them. And that's a, that's a massive thing. So just that simple idea of 
singing along with a pentatonic scale and working on that. If you haven't done that before, it can fundamentally change the way that you approach soloing. Okay, so part two, what have I been working on? Uh, a lot of you will know that I've been working on my jazz playing for the past uh, year or so. Uh, my dear friend Mark Johns, who is one of the most accomplished musicians I've ever met in my life, uh, he has agreed to teach me. And so I've been working with him for the past year, but there's some things that I've um, sort of been really struggling to get my head and my fingers around. So for the past couple of weeks, I've really been working on um, my 251 changes. Now, for those of you who don't know what a 251 is, uh, a 251 is the chords that are associated with the second, the fifth, and the first uh, scale notes in a key signature. So for example, if I'm in the key of A, the second chord will be a B minor, the five will be an E dominant seven, and the one chord, uh, an A major, or an A major seven. So, especially in jazz, you have so many... There all these two fives that happen all the time, and um, really understanding and learning to play um, over these two five one changes is a you know a really great skill to have. Now, the two five one is not just a jazz thing, it's, it's yeah, understanding how it works, how the two takes you away from the tonal center, the five sets you up to go back to the tonal center, and of course the one is where you land back at the tonal center. That applies in everything. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the theory of two five ones. If that's something that you guys are interested in, I can certainly uh, look at that a little bit later on. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is just really focus on the process and on what I'm doing to sort of get a new set of skills under my fingers. So the first thing I wanna do is find a tune to work with. Um, now this is a track, changes uh, from um, that song Nothing From Nothing, but you hear these changes like all the time, the classic, um, you know, gospel type changes and you hear them in jazz all, you know, all over the place. So I've basically cobbled this together. So with a tune like this, where the changes happen so quickly, it's so important to really know them. So I'm gonna play through the changes once, uh, sort of normally, then I'm gonna show you a technique that I use um, to sort of really help me get inside the changes. So they're the basic chords, okay? Chords that most of you will know. Now I'm gonna change the way I play the chords to keep them all in the same area to sort of keep it as efficient as possible. So I'll do that in lots of different positions over the neck to sort of really understand those chords and what's going on, right? Now the next thing is to learn the arpeggios that are associated with those chords, okay? Because what I really want to do is play these changes. I want to understand the notes that go into the chords, and that's what arpeggios are. They are literally, arpeggio literally means broken chord, so it's the notes of those chords. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start using the arpeggios from those chords, and I'm going to play really, really slowly and target the notes from those chords. So a really important factor in practicing a song like this is I'm not thinking about the chord that I'm on. Okay, so for example, if I'm on A minor, I know how to play over A minor. What I'm thinking about is the chord that's coming up. That might be G minor, and that's going to go to C and then F, so a 2-5 in F. So I'm getting ready for that, and as soon as that happens, and I'm playing through the 2-5 in F, then I'm going to think about what's going to come next, you know, going to the E7. Now 
Another really great way to practice this is through visualization. So like without a guitar at all, um, just thinking through the song and the changes and visualizing where your hand is and the notes you're playing and then listening to the chords change and then changing along with those chords. Um, it's actually really tricky to do. I, my, my mind wanders all the time, but it's a fantastic way to uh, really get to know the changes. So over the course of two weeks, there were lots of very early starts. So 6 a.m. with a cup of coffee and iReal Pro and just going through the, uh, the song for an hour before anyone else has basically started their day. And over the course of two weeks, I probably averaged about two hours a day working on the tune. Now I wanted to do something special for you guys uh, who are interested in working on this sort of thing. So I've got some of my friends involved. Hi guys. Hello. Hey, how's it going? So Andy and Joey and Mick are gonna have a play as well. But for now, here's what I've been able to uh, achieve by playing over the changes. So I'll share it.
my TPS till I die. Well, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. A massive thank you to Andy Timmons, to Adam Neely, to Jack Duxbury, to Joey Landreth, uh, to Dougie Massard for joining Mick and myself in this epic jam. It was so much fun. Uh, okay, so at the end of two weeks, how did I do? Um, you know, it's difficult when you've got players like, you know, Mick and Joey and, and Andy in, in there as well, not to compare yourself. Um, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, there are things that I can play now that I couldn't play two weeks ago. So I'm going to take that as a win. Um, but thank you for watching and have a great day. See you guys. Bye.